finishing the ride with, with a couple of hours uh, low carb on, on water just to really engage that sort of fat burning capacity, I guess. I'd really love people to stop using carbohydrate restriction techniques in their training because it really doesn't help. So I've seen a lot of a lot of coaches using it, not at the top end of the sport, towards, towards the bottom and the middle end of, of cycling using uh, carbohydrate restriction techniques and it is not productive. So I think there's this common misconception that all the World Tour teams and all the pros are, are doing all this fast training and low carb training. Um, and in the work I do, I have not seen that at the top end of the sport. So in this video, I'm going to look at this study that came out in May this year, really good meta-analysis, uh, looking at the effects of different uh, carbohydrate restriction or, you know, in nicer terms, periodization, carbohydrate periodization, but it's really carb restriction. And, and if that has an impact on performance. So looking at the different methods of low carbohydrate training, you've got training after an overnight recovery with a reduced carbohydrate intake. So that's doing a high intensity session at night and depleting your glycogen not consuming carbohydrates overnight and then doing a fast, a, a low carbohydrate ride in the morning. Restriction of carbohydrate in between two daily, se uh, daily sessions, so similar idea, intense session in the morning to deplete, uh, restricting carbohydrates through the day and then training in the afternoon. Faster training rides where you're not ingesting any carbohydrate. And then the fourth one that the study looked at was a, a hard depleting ride uh, followed by recovery either fasted or with a low carbohydrate intake. So the findings, I'm not gonna spend half an hour digging in, picking the bones out of the study. I'll just show you the good bits. So um, nine studies were included in the meta-analysis and the analysis was done on performance data. So looking at whether the athlete's performance increased. So this is not looking at different mechanisms and different little things like that. This is, does carbohydrate restriction improve performance? And three quotes I've pulled out that basically sums up the results. The meta-analysis revealed that the overall effect of periodizing carbohydrate availability on performance in well-trained endurance athletes was not significant when compared, to, compared to a chronic high-carbohydrate diet. And then also, overall, the present meta-analysis does not support periodic carbohydrate restriction as a superior approach for enhancing endurance performance in well-trained athletes, and that the physiological stimuli prompted by undertaking an acute exercise bout with low carbohydrate availability does not translate into clear, measurable enhancements of performance in already adapted endurance range athletes compared to training with high carbohydrate availability. So they're not saying that there isn't some mechanism by which you know things change. Of course, if you can, if you train with low carbohydrate availability, you can get different um, stimulus and different enzymes and things like that. But in terms of performance, it they have found that it doesn't increase performance. So. A, Put down here as well so two of the nine studies found some improvements and they were the studies that looked at using the method of training at night an overnight fast and then training uh doing a lower intensity intensity session in the morning but there are a range of comforting factors in those studies so there was a bit of weight loss from the glycogen depletion which could have assisted in the running performance and then also there could have been a super compensation of glycogen after those depletion rides so when when they bring in carbohydrates again and retest the uh, supercompensation of glycogen could have um, been one of the reasons for improving performance. So basically, I'm just saying that there was two of the nine studies did find some improvement, but overall, the effect was not significant um, in this meta-analysis. So then, a um, couple of things. Not only does it probably not improve performance, but it also comes with a whole risk of dangers and side effects. So you've got things like when you're restricting carbohydrate and also then as a and add on restricting calories to some form, you're gonna have impacts on your bone health, your immune function, hormone function, let alone your mental health, so athletes' mood and vitality, and then potentially impacting on your higher intensity sessions that you've gotta do in the rest of the week. So it's not this sort of free game that you may as well just try because it might in improve your performance a couple of percent. There are some real negatives and downsides that are gonna come into play. Um, so then you're probably asking, well, if carbohydrate restriction doesn't improve performance, what can I actually do to stimulate more of an adaptation on top of the training I already do? So I list out a few things that come to mind on this um, and you'll see there's a bit of a theme and they're things that build you up. So focus on the things that build your power and build your fitness and make you a stronger, healthier athlete. So the first one's a blood test. When's the last time you got a blood test? Check things like your iron status, your B12 levels, your vitamin D. These are things that if they're lacking, they're certainly gonna decrease your performance. So First thing to do is, if you haven't had a blood test recently, go and get a blood test and make sure that all the levels of the key um, nutrients and, and measurements are all uh, are all at a high enough level so that your training you're doing, you're getting really good adaptation and stimulus from that. Then I've got overfueling your key sessions. So instead of cutting back for your low intensity sessions, 
and trying to stimulate adaptations that way, why not overfuel uh, your key sessions, your harder sessions with carbohydrates? So instead of just going, I've got a three hour ride with some efforts, I'm just gonna do 50 grams an hour. Why not try and push that up? If you can tolerate it, you, you, you don't have any gut issues, push that up, try and get towards your upper limit. And maybe that'll then allow you to do an extra couple of percent power output in your efforts. And you're gonna get a really good uh, adaptation from that. So try you know, what, we can, what I call overfueling your key sessions. Then we've got things like strategic use of ergogenic aids like caffeine. So not using them chronically, but trying to use caffeine at specific times for your hardest, most intense sessions. And th these are things that are proven to improve your performance. So things like caffeine, um, bicarb if you want to try that, beetroot, music, like any, any ergogenic aid that's potentially going to give you a boost in power output for a key session and not come with those negative side effects, I think is worth trying. Final two, we've got heat stimulus. So have you, you know, especially if you're competing in the heat, are you using things like sauna, things like hot water immersion after your rides? Are you doing things and manipulating your core body temperature and heat either throughout the session or after a session to stimulate some adaptations in your blood? So that's that stuff's proven to work. So have a think about that. And then also, there's a range of sort of on bike and training manipulations you can do. So are you spending time in your air position? Are you including sprint work in your endurance rides? Those types of things where you're not necessarily doing more work, you're just making small changes to the work you're already doing to perhaps stimulate more adaptations and get more bang for your buck. So the study is is this one here. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to read it. Um, it's fairly fairly well written, fairly easy to read. They give a really good background on the, on the topic. So. It's, if you have a little bit of interest in science, it's, it's definitely one I'd recommend having a read through and checking it out.